Uh, wow. 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 The champion bust up, ladies and gentlemen. The champion itself. All the bust ups out there. Bad boy Marcus Alonso, the enigma, has done it again. And we must, we must react to this. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. This is the news as it is. We're going to react to this and uh, we're going to have to be very, very truthful about this situation. We cannot hold back anymore. We need to give it in this particular situation. Ladies and gentlemen, Nathan Jeezing, as he goes by CFC News page on Instagram, has put out a bombshell late last night, UK time, and it goes something like this. Understand Marcus Alonso was subbed off at half time against Wolves due to a bust-up between two KL. Now, we were told that maybe it was a tactical thing. Clearly, it wasn't tactical. It did not make sense to us. We all said it post the Wolves game. Why Saul came on? I mean, it didn't make sense. And it's because of this, because... Marcus Alonso, he's having a bust up. He's done this with Frank Lampard. He's now done it with Thomas Tuchel. This guy, he must think he's some sort of a legendary left wing back out there. He must think he's the next best thing after Roberto Carlos. But anyway, sources tell me it's been described as a heated exchange. Marcus, Marcus's priority is to leave Chelsea this summer with Barca working on it. More details soon. And let's have a look at the second part of this news, which goes something like this. More. The feeling inside of the dressing room is this could be Alonso's final game in a Chelsea shirt this season or maybe ever, with the Spaniards' priority is to return to Spain this summer. Barca working on it and is seen as a possibility contracts between contacts between the agents and the club. Uh, um, between the agents and the club. So it's probably ongoing. Look, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to play different cards today we're going to look at every single situation of this matter we look at all possibilities you know looking at every uh possibilities in this scenario one side we're going to talk about how mark salonzo majority of fan base we know this guy is simply not a good player on the other side we're going to look at all his clutch moments the goals and whatnot every now and then he, he plays a very good game or he has a patch patches of very good games um and then we're going to obviously focus on player power and, you know, what happens next? You know, we've got a few games lined up. Who can we possibly play? But player power is something we definitely want to talk about. First of all, ladies and gentlemen, my honest feeling about Marcus Alonso, I want to hear from you guys. This guy, it, it all started from the Sari season. Under Antonio Conte, he was fine, but that was only the first season. I don't think he was that good in the second season for Antonio Conte. And then Sari came in. And Sari got fooled by this particular player. And we, as a fan base, we got fooled because he was playing so well in the beginning. Ended up getting that contract extension. Ended up getting the praise from Sari in the press conference in front of the millions saying that he is one of the best left-sided player. And I think since then, Marcus Alonso's head just became so big, he can't get rid of that praise. The honest truth is he is not one of the best ones out there. Look, he's got clear flaws mobility at times he's so clumsy yes a lot of people will say he's technical yeah he is technical and his ball control is not bad there's some deft touches at times but the man is clumsy defensively attackingly sometimes simple passes he can't seem to make it the pace is never there he gets blitzed by almost everyone defensively we've all seen him how clumsy he can be plethora of red cards plethora of penalties given away at the wrong time um and clearly, the attitude at times is a bit of an issue. That lethargic body movement, some could say, oh, but Oz is like that, do you know what I mean? Sometimes have No, those guys have source. This guy, not necessarily all the time, has source. So that's one side of the story that we, we, we cannot hide and we cannot run away from the fact that how, how much how much flaws that he has he's not he's not a perfect player and obviously all these bust ups this bust up is not the first time he's had it with Thomas Tuchel uh, well obviously with Thomas Tuchel but this bust up situation isn't the first time he's done it with Frank Lampard as well um last season I believe West Brom we were losing 3-0 at half time um and he was hooked off and he didn't like it and then Frank Lampard didn't speak to him for three months I think he was sent off to the bus uh, so on and so forth. He, he didn't even come back uh, in, in the second half to to cheer on his his teammates when we actually came back. He was actually stuck in the bus. And Frank didn't speak to him three months. 
Now, similarly with Thomas Tuchel, but do you know what? I blame each of these managers. Sari kept on playing him. Eventually enough, we had a hashtag for Emerson, uh, justice for Emerson. And eventually enough, Emerson came in and he did well. And then all of a sudden, Alonso came back as soon as Frank Lampard came on. Uh, and then Frank slowly started to realize. Now, Thomas Tuchel is starting to realize. There was a moment earlier this season, a lot of the fan base was calling for Alonso to start a lot more than Ben Chilwell. Because as you guys remember, Ben Chilwell didn't start the season uh, you know, he didn't get the game time in the beginning and then it was very slow and Alonso was doing well. And some parts of the fan base were starting to say, maybe Alonso is a good co co competition for Ben Chilwell. No, he's not. And then soon enough, Ben Chilwell took over and before we knew it, baby, baby, Ben Chilwell became, you know, a monster for us. And since Ben Chilwell has been injured, it's just been going downhill. So, look, I blame the managers for not realizing this player. I, I don't know what he does. He must impress them in training. He must show them that he's got the techers, but clearly he doesn't and he keeps fooling them. And there's a saying, you know, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. And this is what's been happening. We've been fooled several times. These managers have been fooled several times and he seems to get away. Now, that's one side of the story. The other side of the coin is, ladies and gentlemen, that he... He has produced some really fine moments at Chelsea Football Club. There's no doubt about that. The goals against Spurs, against so like especially against Spurs, but many other teams out there. There's been some clutch moments at times. There's been some really good matches from him as well. Surprising. I don't know why he can't keep up with that consistency um, on a regular basis, but every now and then he pulls out an absolute banger, you know, glittered with plethora of poor performances. Sometimes he'll go through a patch where it's been decent. Sometimes he puts in a nice assist as well. Recently, I think he put an assist for, um, I can't remember, maybe it might have been a Ziyech goal or someone like that. might have been a Ziyech goal. Uh, but yeah, I'm not taking that away from him. I'm not taking that away from him. But I need a player moving forward. I wanted this guy to be gone way back from Sari season. The fact that he got a contract extension at that time was mad was mad. And these are the things that we can't make these type of mistakes in, moving in uh, to the new ownership. When we notice someone who's not good enough, let's just bite the bullet and get rid of them. This is what all the other top clubs do. We need to start acting like that. Bottom line with Marcus Alonso, thank you so much for all the efforts, all the goals, but you are not Chelsea quality. Yes, thank you for winning the Premier League under Antonio Conte, FA Cup. He's, he's, he's glittered with Silverway, there's no doubt about that. But you are not the kind of quality that we need. When you've got in world football the likes of Robertson playing for um, Liverpool, the likes of Cancelo, who's multifaceted in both sides, whether left or right, even Zinchenko is not that bad. Marcus Alonso is simply not up to that standard. We need pace. We need a lot more, you know, technicality. I'm not saying he doesn't have it, but the clum clumsiness needs to get away. So that's that. The other thing that I want to talk about is this whole player power. This is quite important now, okay? We need to eradicate player power. But at the same time, it's not that easily, you know, that, that it can be eradicated. I'm a bit worried for Thomas Tuchel. And hear me out why. And this is not having a go at Thomas Tuchel. This is a concern about the situation. This season, yes, Marcus Alonso has had the bust up. But look at all the players that are unhappy. You've got Romelu Lukaku, a lot that has been undone by himself. I get that. But at the end of the day, that's another player that is unhappy. I hope Thomas Tuchel can somewhat change that around. Christian Pulisic, we've seen he doesn't get enough start. His dad comes out and tweets out. So you know his camp is unhappy. Ziyech, I couldn't imagine how he could be happy. And he has mentioned previously, you know, the starts and whatnot. He's always been rumored to be leaving Chelsea. Timo Werner, we know recently when he went to the last international break for Germany, he said... You know, playing for Germany suits him a lot better. Not getting enough minutes. Obviously, recently he has. Um, Saul, okay, I can't imagine how he can be happy. Alonso, obviously, with the bust up. Lots of players leaving. Rudiger, Christensen, Aspilicueta, most likely leaving as well. Chalaba, I wonder how he feels about all of this situation. So, bottom line, what I'm trying to say, this is a concern for Thomas Tuchel. You cannot expect... I don't know what's going to happen. I want to hear from you guys as well. I've said it many times in videos, on live streams or whatever, many videos. I personally cannot expect every single player to leave, right? 
I think it would be great if they left and just replaced them with new players, but I don't think we can expect every single player to leave. Obviously, Rudiger, Christensen, most likely Aspilicueta, maybe a couple of other players might go and we'll pop, 100% we have to replace the CBs, but I don't know if we're going to be able to replace every single player. Like That's a lot of work to do for the new owners to come in who are not even passed by the Premier League yet. Yeah, it's done and dusted. I get that. Like you know, Chelsea has done the... Uh, due diligence is just up to the Premier League now to tick it all off and the government as well. And it may be till the end of May. By the time June comes around, I don't know if we're going to have enough time in summer to contact every agent out there, scouting, which has been an issue, to replace everyone. So what I'm trying to get to it is that, guys, some of these players that are not happy at the moment may still stick around next season. And Thomas Tuchel needs to bring them around and put him under his wings again. There are, I feel like there's too many players that's either unhappy, disgruntled, and not directly because of Thomas Tuchel, but because of their own player performances, how poor it's been. Maybe part of it could be Thomas Tuchel because of the formation that we play. We don't get to play enough attacking personnel. I'm just concerned that the, the list of all these players is a bit too long for Thomas Tuchel to, to, to start another campaign. I think next season, some of these players... Yes, Rudy's already going and Rudy's not an issue, but when a player is leaving, I don't know mentally if they're still here. I feel like Rudy's slowly checking out as well. Aspi with all the mistakes. AC, don't even know where he is. Alonso, you know, these are players that are playing in our team and they could become a bit of a rogue. So Lukaku, uh, you, you know what these, I'm sure they talk to each other. This is how Frank Lampard's demise, it started, you know. He, him missing the trick on player management. Alonso getting sin-binned for three months. Apparently, he wasn't spoken to for three months. You know, slowly, Jorginho. Jorginho is another one. Lately, Thomas Tuchel has been saying in the press conference that mentally he seems tired. So, I don't know how much all of that is affecting. So, all of this stuff, I just hope that we can clear out as many as we can in the summer, I don't expect everyone, and then bring in new fresh face. I think this is very important for player power. I need Thomas Tuchel to become the biggest talking point at Chelsea Football Club, just like it is with Man City, with Pep Guardiola, just like it is with Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp. Those two guys are the centre point of their clubs. I need Thomas Tuchel to be the centre point. Some of these players, and there's been articles from Matt Law saying, that these players, they know how it works at Chelsea Football Club. They know that the players last longer than the manager. I need that to be eradicated. New owner has to come in and empower Thomas Tuchel and make every player understand Thomas Tuchel and his staff members are the centerpiece of the situation. If anything goes wrong, players are the one that's going to be you know, removed, not Thomas Tuchel. As long as Thomas Tuchel keeps producing, obviously. If Thomas Tuchel starts going sideways well that's a different story but next season ladies and gentlemen we have to be able to get rid of some of these players and looks like alonso is on the way um ac rudy aspi perhaps some of the forward players whether it's verna lukaku christian pulisic Ziyech, some of those brothers need to go as well fresh faces need to come in who are handpicked by scouts by the new director of football. Hopefully we get a new director of football, please. If we don't, it has to be sometime very, very soon. And then obviously signed off by Thomas Tuchel as well. And then we get his players and they understand him and they make him the center point. So that's about player power. Now, I want to talk about possible um, replacements for Marcus Alonso. We've got a few games coming up and apparently Marcus Alonso, ladies and gentlemen, May not play another game for Chelsea. He may look. We'll see what happens. But we're in a bit of a we're in a bit of a um, situation here. We're in the mud. Uh, obviously, Chilwell not going to come back um, for for this particular season. Alonso, if we assume that that's it, done and dusted, your time is up. Who do we have? If we play with a back three and a wing back, I definitely don't want to see Malangsa. Malangsa ain't Chelsea quality, but maybe he might be you know, put into that situation. But he generally plays as an LCB. I've not really seen him. I think it might have been once or twice. Maybe he played as a wing back, um, But not necessarily he's done well. So Malang Saad, for me, is not an option. 
Kennedy, I don't even know who where Kennedy is. Can someone help me out? Can someone find where Kennedy is? I mean, what was the point of bringing him back if we're not even going to use him? Thomas Tuchel had so much praise when he brought him back. So I don't know what's going on there. Lewis Hall would be a cheeky shout for me. I like Lewis Hall from what I saw, the little bits of it this season. Yes, it was a weakened opposition, um, but Lewis Hall maybe is someone we can give it a go. Saul, he simply does not work on the left side. So for me, that's not an option. Aspilicueta, I don't even want him to be in the field, if I'm being absolutely honest. The guy is making too much mistakes. I thank you for all his services. He's a legend of the football club, but... I just don't want him. He's struggling on his right side football, let alone left side football. So, look, I don't know. For me, the preference is Kennedy, but God knows where Kennedy is. Please, ladies and gentlemen, help me out where Kennedy is, if not Lewis Hall. Um, what are we going to lose? Honestly, what are we going to lose? We're, we're not already not picking up any points. Might as well put in a youngster that's hungry, that may you know, look forward to impress, and maybe we get something out of it. If it's a back four, Reese James obviously right back. And maybe Aspilicueta as a left back. He's played as a left back. Maybe someone who doesn't need to bomb up. Maybe stays as a reserve sort of left-sided player. Then again, I'm not entirely happy with it. But who else are you going to use? Maybe Malang Sa. Malang Sa can play as a left back because he's played as an LCB. Not the greatest option. Not someone, as I said, that I would fancy. Lewis Hall again. But maybe as a left back for Lewis Hall, that's too much to ask for. For a youngster to be up and down and help defensively or else we're going to be ex absolutely exposed on that side we're in the mud we're in the mud but uh, this is where i want to see thomas Tugel. i would love to see him make a bold statement and bring someone like lewis hall in but that's just my preference as i said you know kennedy but i don't know where he is but yeah ladies and gentlemen you let me know what you think uh about this entire situation i want marcus alonso gone in fact i wanted marcus alonso gone years ago years ago on the sorry season um these bust ups they need to stop. They need to stop. And whenever these players, they do this, they 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 create a chain reaction on other players thinking that they can now do this. As you recall, when Lukaku had that interview, I'm sure all the other players, they thought, oh, okay, maybe we can start being public about our issues. And surely enough, few few players have. Some, some players' parents have also uh, got in on that act. So we need to stop that. Empower Thomas Tuchel, new owners, Try and get rid of as many as you can of these players that are disgruntled, that are happy, because at the end of the day, we need happy players. We need players that want to play for Chelsea Football Club, that want to play for Thomas Tuchel at the end of the day. Thomas Tuchel needs to be the center point. If we want to be successful, just like the other two um, you know, teams out there, City and Liverpool, we need to ensure our gaffer is the main point of focus. Ladies and gentlemen, let me know how you feel about all of this. Um, smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, see ya.